Hello everybody. In this video today, we are going to take a look at a simulator called QUCS and we are going to use that simulator particularly for uh, RF circuit simulation. Now QUCS can be used not just for RF but for any circuit simulation because its name is quite universal circuit simulator that is the full form. But we are going to use it specifically for RF because it is one of those few softwares which is available for use for RF applications uh, free of cost. Most of the softwares for RF that you need to use are proprietary and very costly. So the download link for this uh, QUCS software is uh, given in the description box of this video. So I encourage you all to download that on your respective machines. So once you download the QUCS and you have to extract the files from the zip folder, you will see that the folder contains uh, these other directories and uh, files. So what you need to do is you just need to go to bin and then go to this executable called QUCS which you will double click to open the software. Now what you see is once you have opened the software this window opens up. So let us go to project and say new project. Let me give the project name as QWT-2 GHz. Now you must have guessed by the name of this project what we are going to make today. We are going to make a quarter wave transformer that does impedance matching at a frequency of 2 GHz. And we are going to do that using a microstrip technique. So we will say create. Now that we have created the project, you can go to this side pane which consists of libraries, components, the project navigation and so on and so forth. So let us say that uh, we will have to match a load that is of impedance 100 ohms to a line that uh, has impedance of 50 ohms. Now, to do this, we will need a quarter wave transformer at 2 gigahertz whose impedance will be the geometric mean of the main line impedance and the load impedance. In this case, it will be 70.71 ohms. So therefore, let us first select the load. And before we go to the load actually, let us uh, define our substrate. Because when we use microstrip lines, we have to define our substrate. So therefore, let us go to this option called transmission lines and you see this option called a substrate. So therefore, I am going to click this and immediately a substrate gets attached to my mouse cursor. So what I am going to do now is I am going to assign some values to all the parameters. I am going to have an epsilon of 4.4. So you need to double click on the substrate, you will get 4.4. The thickness of the substrate or the height of the substrate is 1.6 millimeters. The metal thickness is 35 microns, so we need not change it. The tan delta or the loss tangent of the FR4 substrate is 0 0.02 and that's about it. So our substrate is now defined. If you want, we can give it a name that is FR4. Alright. So now let us define our load. So for load, you can use a lump resistor. So I am going to choose this resistor American symbol. And uh, you can rotate the resistor by simply right clicking on your mouse. And you can escape the resistor mode by clicking escape. So what you need to do is you need to specify what is the value of this resistance. So the load that we want is 100 ohms. So therefore let's do this and press enter. So we will say okay. 
Now, we have two options. We can define a transmission line of 50 ohms as the main line. But for that, then we will need to specify the length of that line also. Because unlike theory, in the simulation, you need to specify everything. So therefore, rather than defining the 50 ohm transmission line, I can define a port of 50 ohms, which is like having a feed line of 50 ohms. So therefore, I will go to this option called as insert port and I am going to include it over here. Right? This is what one I can do. But again, rather than doing that, I can uh, delete this and I will go to an option called as sources. Now under sources, you see there are a lot of these sources, DC voltage, current and so on and so forth. But I am going to select a power source. So once I select the power source, I am going to bring it over here. So effectively what I have done is I have defined a power source called port 1 whose internal impedance is 50 ohms. And that is how we actually define our uh, ports in real life also. In RF and microwave applications, it is very difficult to measure the voltage and current at one point. So that's why we are more concerned about the flow of power or voltage. Hence, selecting a power source makes way more sense. So therefore, my source and transmission line are now can be thought as absorbed into this power source. So now what I am going to do is I have to connect this source and the load by means of the QWT, a single quarter wave transformer that has a characteristic impedance of 70.71 ohms which is the geometric mean of 50 and 100. So I will again go back to transmission lines and I am going to select this option called as a macro strip line and I am going to bring this over here. Now. We need to know what should be its length and width. So to help you, there are these huge formulae which are there for micro strip lines which are already encoded into this software. Now we are going to use this tool called as line calculation under tools. So when I click this, you can see that I can get a micro strip line. There are a lot of options. So I am now going to change all the units to millimeters because that is what we are going to use. So my epsilon r is 4.4. Let us give the same parameters as we have defined for the substrate. The height is 1.6 millimeters. HT is nothing but the top of the air that is uh, above the, the micro strip, so that should be as large as possible. So the metallic thickness is 0 0.035 millimeters or 35 microns. The tan delta is 0 0.02 and that is it. So no, now we need a line of impedance 70.71 ohms and electrical length which is the angle that should be 90 degrees and I am going to enter my frequency as 2 gigahertz. Then I am going to press synthesize and I want them in millimeter units. Mil stands for 1 by 1000th of an inch. So make sure that you are using metric system that is millimeters. So I am going to press on synthesize. So as you can see this tool has given me that the length should be 21.14 millimeters and the width is roughly about 1.58 millimeters. So I am going to go inside. The substrate has to be the same as that we have defined that is FR4. The width which our tool calculated was 1.58 and the length was 21.14 millimeters. And that is it. There is nothing more we need to do. Now I am going to connect a ground over here and one more ground over here and I am going to connect everything by means of a wire.
So my circuit now is ready. Now there are a few things I have to specify. Before we can observe the output. Now what we are going to do is we are going to enter the type of simulation that we want to do. Now to see how well this uh, quarter wave transformer is able to match the load to the line, all I need to do is to observe the S11 at port 1. So therefore I am going to go to this library uh, subsection called as simulations and I am going to click on S parameters. Now over here I have to specify what is the range of frequencies for which I want to calculate the S parameters. So therefore what I will do, I will go from 0 all the way till let us say 8 gigahertz so that I can see a large range of frequencies and let us say I will specify 201 points between this interval so that the step size will be 40 megahertz. So I will now say ok. Now when the simulator, when the simulator does the calculations, it will calculate the S parameters no doubt, but then as you know the S parameters are in general complex numbers. So they have some real part, they have an imaginary part or if you talk of uh, the polar form and not the Cartesian form then S parameters will have uh, a magnitude and a phase component. So now what interests us at, at this point is the magnitude component. So therefore what I am going to do is I am going to include an equation. So I am going to insert an equation which extracts the magnitude of the S parameters. So therefore what I am going to say is I am going to define a quantity called as mag underscore S11 and that will be equal to so the value of that now I am going to have to say it will be the absolute this is a predefined function in this simulator I have to calculate the absolute value of the S11 now inside the matrix I am going to have to open a square bracket and say S1 comma 1 that is it and I will say ok so this is what I want to C. Now I am ready to do my simulation. So therefore I am going to click on this button called simulate. So now let me first save this. So now the simulator window has opened. So that so there is a schematic window and once you simulate a diagram window will open up asking you to choose what kind of plot you want to see. So what I want to see is essentially the S11 magnitude versus frequency. So I am going to select a Cartesian plot. Right? So now you have to select the quantity that, that you want to see. So I am going to select mag S11 and it is added to the graph. Now I will say ok and now you can zoom in and see that this is the graph. At the frequency 2 gigahertz, this provides you the perfect matching. And at a frequency of around 6 gigahertz, again, it gives you the perfect matching. Now, as you know that if a line is matched at a frequency using a quarter wave transformer, the transformer will also match at thrice that frequency. Hence, you see a good matching at 6 gigahertz also. But at 0 and 4 gigahertz, you see the local maxima in the S11 response. So, 
Now for closer look, you, what you can do is you can insert uh, any marker that you want. You can expat, export it to CSV. You can go to this option called as marker. So at this point you can see that the value of the gamma is 0 0.002. And at 6 gigahertz, it's equal to 0 0.0259. Now, if you want, you can also, as I was saying, extract this graph to CSV. That means you can extract this uh, graph data in the uh, in a comma-separated variable format, so that you can plot it uh, by yourself using a better plotter, right? So. You can see you can say export as image or you can also say export to csv there is this option export to csv so i'm going to select this and i'm going to say project export to csv and you can save it in any folder that you want now there is one more thing that you can do. You can see the impedance as a function of frequency and for that you can select a Smith chart. So I am going to now put the Smith chart over here and I am going to select the S11 in its complex form which is not the magnitude. So I am going to say OK. So now you can see that this shows you the impedance plot as a function of frequency. So again you can put a marker, here is the center of the Smith chart and you can see that at 1.92 or very close to 2 gigahertz, the S11 is very less and the impedance seen is very very close to 50 ohms. So with this I have given you uh, today a very brief idea of what the uh, QUCS simulator looks like and with this I now invite you to try it out by yourself and make the circuits of your choice and verify their working for RF applications. Thank you.